Hey everyone, welcome to A plus PI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation with complex numbers where the exponent is unknown. We have 1 plus i to the power n equals 8 minus 8i and we're going to be solving for n values. n is an integer in this case and here's a question for you. What happens if n is not an integer? Can we find the solutions? That's for you to think about, and I'm going to proceed with the solution. All right? To be able to solve this problem, obviously, if you are familiar with 1 plus i and 1 minus i, that will be super duper helpful, because we're going to use the polar forms. So how can you write a number in polar form? Hopefully, you've seen the lecture videos. If not, Go ahead and check them out. I made, I think, nine lecture videos on different topics. And let us know if you have any questions. So, 1 plus i is a very special number because if you think about the graph or the plot, it's basically the point that is determined by 1, 1, right? So, our number basically is a point in the complex plane. And its distance from 0 is defined to be the modulus or the absolute value. This is 1. This is i, this is real, this is imaginary. Make sense? So two things to know. First, the modulus. Second, the argument. Argument is the angle that it makes with the positive real axis. In this case, that happens to be pi over 4 because it is the diagonal. Make sense? It is an isosceles right triangle. Great. So we have everything we need. And as you hopefully know, any complex number can be written as r times e to the i theta. r is the modulus, theta is the argument. We have everything we need. What about 1 minus i? Well, why did I mention 1 minus i? Because i have 8 times that. If I can do 1 minus i, then it's just going to be 8 times that. Uh, and another vector that has a different magnitude in the same direction. See, we can also express them as vectors. But 1 minus i is just going to be here, instead of in the first quadrant, it's just going to be in the third quadrant. Therefore, the angle that it makes is not going to be pi over 4. It's actually going to be 2 pi minus pi over 4, which you can express as 7 pi over 4. By the way, I'm sorry, I should start here, not at the... Uh-oh. Okay. When you do it... <laughs> okay. I kind of do it. I need to do it kind of quickly so that it doesn't make a circle. Anyways. So, this angle is 7 pi over 4. Make sense? But the modulus is the same. It's still root 2, as you can see from the Pythagorean theorem. So, to keep a long story short, 1 plus i can be written as r times e to the power i times pi over 4. And 1 minus i can be written as root 2 times e to the power i times 7 pi over 4. You get it? i is always mul always multiplied by the argument. But wait a minute, I have 8 times that. No worries, multiply both sides by 8 and you'll be good to go. Make sense? It's that easy. Because 8 is just going to be part of i. Okay? Cool. Now, we have everything we need. Let's go ahead and plug it in. I have 1 plus i to the power n equals 8 times 1 minus i. Therefore, this is going to become root 2 times e to the power i times pi over 4, all raised to the power n, equals 8 root 2 times e to the power i times 7 pi over 4. By the way, these are called polar forms, and thanks to Euler, we can write them in a very compact form. And here's the fun part. We're going to be solving for n, so we've got to do a little bit of algebra here some exponentiation, put everything on the same side, so on and so forth. And this can be done in, in a variety of ways, but I'm just going to try to keep it simple. I want to put everything on the same side. You don't have to. You could also just use the natural log. But one thing to be careful about is because we have a variable n on the left-hand side, so pi over 4 is going to work fine. But on the right-hand side, we kind of need to consider the period. Notice that any theta can be added to 2 pi to produce the same angle. Therefore, they are basically uh, vary by 
a period of 2 pi i. Okay, makes sense? So instead of 7 pi over 4, if you want, you can kind of add a, something like a 2 pi k here and then multiply the whole thing by i. Or you can leave it like this as is and then don't worry about the 2 pi addition and you can take care of that at the end. Make sense? That's what I'm going to do. So let's go ahead and simplify this, shall we? First of all, you raise root 2 to the power n, and then you do e to the power i pi n over 4. You can do it because n is an integer. You can't all the time do it because sometimes it's going to cause issues. Here we have 8 root 2 and the same thing, okay? Nothing changes on the right-hand side yet. Here's what we're going to do. We want to divide the right, left-hand side by the right-hand side. So in other words, bring everything on the left-hand side so that we can set it equal to 1, and then we're going to do our thing. Make sense? So kind of like this. Root 2 to the power n times e to the power i pi n over 4 divided by 8 root 2 times e to the power i times 7 pi over 4, and then this is equal to 1. But instead of 1, I want to write something else. So in, at this point, we're going to we're going to complexify the one. Make sense? How can you complexify one? One is right here, and it makes an angle of zero radians or two pi radians or any multiple of two pi. In other words, the theta is two pi multiplied by n. Wait a minute, we used n, we can't use it, so let's just use k here. Okay? Make sense? So k is two pi k is going to be our argument. But let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit first. Root 2 to the power n divided by 8 root 2 times e to the power. Now I can go ahead and take out actually an i pi over 4 here and that's going to give me n minus 7. Notice that the exponents are subtracted because this is division, right? And that is equal to 1 but I'm going to write it as e to the power 2 pi ki. And then we're going to use the natural logs. When you ln both sides, what's going to happen? When you ln both sides, the powers are going to be going down. So we're going to put a huge ln here and a smaller ln here. No big deal. Same idea. But this is a product, so I can kind of write it as ln something plus something else. But this is a quotient, so I can kind of write it like this. Let me... Go ahead and do this in two steps so it's not too confusing. Plus, and when you ln e, it's going to be 1. So this is going to be i pi over 4 times n minus 7. And this is just going to be 2 pi ki times ln e. But ln e is equal to 1 again. That's why you don't need to write it. Now, this is what I meant in two steps. Now, we have a quotient. And that can be written as the difference of two lns. ln root 2 to the power n minus ln 8 root 2 plus i pi over 4 times n minus 7 is equal to 2 pi ki. Great. Now we can go ahead and bring this n to the front and write this as n times ln root 2 minus ln 8 root 2 plus i pi over 4 times n minus 7. And that's equal to 2 pi ki. Now we have two complex numbers. How do you compare two complex numbers? The real parts are equal and the imaginary parts are equal. This is the real part, but there's no real part on the right-hand side. Even though 1 is a real number, we already ln it. So it just became an imaginary number, which is kind of interesting. But there are infinitely many values for it. That's why k is an integer and n is an integer. So the real part has to be 0 on the left-hand side. That's good. But imaginary part is supposed to equal what? Exactly this part. This is the imaginary part is supposed to equal 2 pi k. Make sense? So we're going to set up a system here. n times ln root 2 equals ln 8 root 2. And you can go ahead and kind of bring this to the front. ln root 2 or bring it back. And now since we have lns and ln is 1 to 1, we can basically say, hey, root 2 to the n is 8 root 2. Awesome. How do you solve it? Just by guess and check? No, no, no. You can write this as 2 to the power 1 half. Remember, root 2 is a real number. It's not, you know, complexified yet or not at all. 
This is 2 to the power 1 half, so it's going to be 2 to the power n over 2. And this is kind of like 2 to the third times 2 to the power 1 half. 3 plus 1 half is equal to 7 halves, so we can write it as 2 to the power 7 halves. By setting the exponents equal to each other, yes, I get n equals 7. Isn't that awesome? But guess what? We have to check the other equation. Now we have pi over 4 times n minus 7 is 2 pi k. Of course, k, I mean pi, cancels out leaving us with n minus 7 is equal to 8k, or n is 8k plus 7. Now, a, n and k are both integers. So, for example, if k is equal to 7, n is going to be, I'm sorry, if k is equal to 0, n is going to be 7. If k is equal to 1, n is going to be 15, so on and so forth, right? The problem is, though, n equals 15 does not satisfy the first equation, which is this one. So, n equals 7 is the only solution and that is the solution to this problem and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and here's the result from wolfram alpha and bye bye